Hey guys, how's it going today? Hey, uh, big day today, man. Finally, it's here. Blaine got it all done, and uh, we're outside the foundry right now. Um, <laughs> Dean doesn't want me to shoot too much of his building here, so uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. His, uh, as usual, Blaine outdid himself and did a beautiful job on this thing. I mean, definitely think it looks brand new, so um, here, here it is right here. So there it is, we gotta lift it out, uh, lift it out of the truck real quick with that engine hoist. So uh, we'll have fun there. Uh, Blaine or Dean was supposed to have a buddy here with a log truck. We were gonna try to get it out, but unfortunately he's not gonna get here until later. So we'll, uh, we'll get this out. I'm not gonna film too much of it, uh, us getting it out because you know Blaine's not into the camera thing too much. and. Um, uh, you know how that goes so anyhow we'll uh once it's out i don't know if we're gonna get it in the foundry today because it's it's kind of clustered in there but once we get it out of the truck and that I'll, I'll get you a real good look at it hang tight guys okay there it is semi semi in its home we're gonna put it over there in that corner okay here we go so what this does this flips back when you're working, all right? And then we don't have enough air in there. You push the one step of the jolt. And then this, once you do it, pull this forward. The flask will be out here, the mold. And that's a squeezer. So that's what, that's what this is called, the jolt squeezer. And then this has a handle on it, I gotta get it. And then you just push that up and down. So that's it, and as soon as we get it all hooked up, it's got a little bit more plumbing to do. Joe's going to uh, wire her up. I'm going to buy a new compressor. We'll get that all wired up. I'll show you that and, and we'll go from there. All right, when we get it all hooked up, we'll show you guys. Hey, everybody. Dave Clark, a.k.a. The Pattern Guy. Uh, sorry it's been a little bit. It's been having a lot of stuff going on here. Um, tried to be getting this uh, molding machine done up at the foundry. My buddy Blaine got uh got the thing done it did things beautiful uh i'm gonna have you take a look at it here i think first what we're going to do is i'm going to show you where everything started um we got the uh compressor i went ahead and got a brand new compressor it, it was a stretch for me really couldn't afford it but i figured you know what it's got a two-year warranty on it and that and that, that way I, I shouldn't have problems for at least two years so that'll help a lot um so we, we finished getting things plumbed up. Um, I promise you I'd show you, you know, some of that. I, I did show you some, but I wanted to show you a little bit more. Although I came up here twice and I forgot, I forgot the camera twice. So Joe came up Brandy Electric. So let me uh, go over to the compressor room. I'm gonna turn the camera off for a second because Dean doesn't want me filming his building, which is fine. So I'll just show you what we did in the compressor room. And then uh, I'll come back here in my room and I'll show you what's going on. So. Hang tight for a sec, guys. Okay, guys, here's uh, here's the compressor room. Here's the compressor. So it's a uh, Ingersoll Rand. It's a two, or I'm sorry, it's a five horsepower um, compressor. They have one that's a thousand dollars more. This one was uh, actually with what's going on. You know the excuses with the. Uh, COVID, they said basically they keep on selling out of these things, so they don't have that many of them. Um, I actually had to go way out of town to get this one, um, actually down by where Blaine lives. And uh, they upped the price a thousand bucks, so this one cost me uh, 1,160 bucks. Um, they have one that's a thousand dollars more, it's a double stage. I kind of wanted to get that one, but it just, I was stretching it for this one. So here's, let me see if I can get some light in here. There's not much light in here. So anyhow, here's where you know the the water or water the air comes out. So we got a valve right where it comes out there, and then that goes up into this is a regulator slash uh, water separator. Okay, 
and then you know we, we branched out we came up here and then I got a light right there see there's a union so if we have any issues and then I'll skip over this light if you can see so then we came up over here and it, you can see the electrical line too is running and that that goes into the uh, the foundry room right there so and then this is what Joe did he put this nice uh, flexible on there you know this thing's gonna be vibrating we do have it bolted down um, you know I put a flexible air hose there up to the solid you know for the vibration and that so so that's that one and uh, let me go show you what you know what we ended up with in the uh, foundry hang on a sec okay guys we're back in the foundry here so this is where the other side of that hole um, we just got some new lights in here too so they're, they're really bright I gotta have bright lights so you got some LED lights in there but we ran this it's the lights are getting in the way there um, just ran this along I got a little drop here so we can put a here's a quick snap there and then um, you know going up along uh, here's the I gotta clean up everything in here that's as soon as I turn the camera off I'm gonna clean up in here um, you know we got another quick snap fitting right there right and then this right here will go into that's Dean's um, utility shop on that side so there's we put a line in there for him and there's a valve yeah, he'll be able to uh, you know put put whatever he wants in there then we come over here down the wall here and there it is there's a molding machine so that's what uh, Blaine spent a lot of time on um, did a beautiful job he took everything apart painted everything what I'll do is uh, he took some um, took a lot of pictures and he took a lot of uh, a couple movies in that so Joe's gonna try to put a little montage together of uh, you know start to finish their form so um, I I'm gonna show you uh, one of the valves is leaking here too I gotta tighten something up, up here I'm gonna put the uh, camera on the uh, tripod and I'll show you uh, show you all how this bad boy works man this thing's this thing's awesome here hang tight okay guys hopefully I'm not gonna cut my head off here I can't I don't have bitch Dave down here but yeah this is what Blaine did um, he took this thing all apart I, I got stuff all over it's gonna get dirty quick we're in a foundry so uh beautiful job this thing's brand new basically um we do have one little valve leaking um he had to rebuild these valves kind of they were backwards so he redid those and something's not tight in there but we'll, we'll get that fixed up though but anyhow here's how this little bad boy works um we will show you how it works with the uh, with a, doing a mold and that. I got to start learning how to do that too, because you know I'm not. I'm just used to doing everything by hand, right? So basically, what happens with this thing? It's called the jolt squeezer. Okay. So what happens with this thing is you start making your mold, and then you hit this one panel. That's my jolt there. Okay. And then. Um, what happens is you, that's something in my pocket there. I gotta put a handle on this. I got a handle for this. I gotta, that was my thing I had to do and I've yet to do it. So you got the mold in between here and then here's the squeezer part. That squeezes it, okay? Boom, so you'll be able to squeeze that and then you drop this table back out of the way. Then this valve, the one that's leaking right here, we got a hose set up on there and then a vibrator attaches to this on your match plate okay so that, that that'll be cool to have that and then i went ahead and uh i purchased this so we'll be able to instead of hand tamping we'll be able to do the molds up okay um this did come with a metal uh, and on it you can't use the metal ends in there so what I did was I made a mold I should have showed you guys that too because this is what we're trying to do uh, learn things so I ended up pouring urethane around the one metal thing so next time I pour one of these things because these things will 
uh, they degrade over time because you know you're just plunging into sand. So hopefully it'll last for for a while, but you know uh, we'll, we'll find out there. So so there's that. You know so hopefully uh, I'm I'm hoping. Uh, you know, I'm not my buddy Randy. Randy, like I said, he can make 20 to 24 molds an hour. By hand, I was making like four to six. And it, it you know, I doubt I'll get to the 20 an hour. Um, it, you know, we, we, you never know, it might happen. I, I can't pour that much either though too, so I don't have the furnace capacity. So. If this works like I think it's going to work, it'll save me a lot of molding time, you know, and then what will happen is we'll uh, have to catch up um, somehow with the uh, furnace. We'll either have to get another furnace. So basically what, you know, this, it's, it's not really a uh, production shop per se. It, it's more like onesies, twosies and that, and then light production. However, I do want to grow this foundry. Um, a lot of foundries are going out of business in that, and uh, it, it's. I, I think we could do good here. Um, I, I really think we could do all right. Um, but we got that new customer. I have yet to make a casting for the guy. He's probably like, well, oh man, I'm, I gave this guy a chance, and you know, we're not doing anything. But I wanted to get everything finished here first, so that I'm. I'm uh, I'm up and running. So I'm up and running now. Um, I say up here, I get up here Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays. That's that's an issue sometimes. So hopefully it's Thursday today. It's kind of, well, it's like 1.30 right now. Um, I, I had to finish hooking up the compressor. I hooked up this machine. And I, I wanted to do it where it, it's going to be good and last you know so i, I don't want to knowing my luck you know guys hey i need castings I'll, I'll have them there tomorrow i'll have them there tomorrow and something will happen or something will break and i can't do it so i want to make sure things were were good so hopefully we're good to go now um like i said if uh this works out the way it's supposed to mold wise and i can start pumping some molds out what we'll end up doing is uh you know, like I said, if it works, then what we'll do is uh, presser just kick that. Um, what we'll do is uh, if we got to get a bigger furnace going, um, I've got two trains of thoughts on, on a furnace. Uh, they're fairly hard to come by. We do have a big used um, foundry supply company here in Cleveland. Actually, that's where we bought all the parts for this for uh, for new. You can buy these there, rebuilt. They're around you know three to six thousand um, dollars. I I don't know how much we have into this altogether. I think I might have less. I think we got less than five hundred dollars into this. But you know, I was gracious, or I wasn't gracious. One of my customers was gracious enough to give me the machine, you know, to begin with. So I got lucky there, you know, I usually lucky there. So, and then Blaine was gracious to, uh, you know, rebuild this for me. I, I, I mean, I owe that guy so much. He, he does a lot of stuff for me. So, like I said, we'll get a montage showing him how he did this, okay? So, I'm gonna, um, we'll see how things go. I got, I, I think, when I came down here today, I wanted to get this done. I wanted to make a whole bunch of molds and start doing it. I was kind of thinking I'd pour a thing of aluminum and a pour a thing of bronze. That definitely is not going to happen. Uh, what I'm thinking right now, we made a horrific mess here getting this set up. So what I'm kind of thinking is that we'll, um, <coughs> excuse me, we'll, uh, I think I'm just going to clean up today, and then uh, my, actually my daughter, my middle daughter, uh, she's the one that dates Joe, the electrician, and you know, he was here doing electric one day, Abby came down here with me, and she cleaned up a ton down here too, so she did a real nice job cleaning up for me and that, but you know, most of the stuff I got here now is, is basically, uh, you know, stuff we had here for like all the plumbing stuff and all the electrical stuff. I got my big ladder here, so that that's in my way of that. And I, I think I might just uh, 
I don't know what I'm going to do. It's kind of chilly here. It's uh, it's October. It's November. So it's usually here in Cleveland, November. We're in the low 50s, upper 40s, early 50s. And, and at this weekend, it's supposed to be in the 60s, almost 70s. So I'm kind of thinking maybe Sunday I'll let the sand warm up a little bit or something. Because I know the sand's going to be a little cold. But it's going to take me an hour or two to clean up in here too. So I think I might just do that today and call it a day. And then what we'll do is um, I'll get the camera to Joe and, um, you know, see what goes. But, you know, we'll see. I might mold some stuff. I'm not sure. If I do, I'll, I'll turn the camera back on, okay, and then I'll, I'll sign off. But, I mean, this is it. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm hoping this is going to be the game changer in here. Um, like I said, it's not really set up as a production shot, but... If uh, this helps me get the production going, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get there. So uh, I'm going to go start cleaning up a little bit and um, I'll turn you guys back on either to sign off or to show you if I'm going to do some more stuff. All right, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right. Okay, guys, um, I, kind of, I was going to do this on camera. I got a little chicken. Like I said, usually I'm, uh, I'm in, I'll admit my mistakes on stuff. I wanted to try to see what this was going to do, you know, before I filmed a little bit. It's not looking too bad so far. Um, I think I do have to do a couple little, uh, I'm going to have to do a couple little adjustments. What I got to do is, um, I'll explain this better. What I'll do is, we'll bring the camera back up. I'll make sure I get it up here Sunday. I'm going to make some molds. If we can't get this thing, we'll just do some hand. I, I'm so far behind on castings. Like I said, I spent a little while cleaning up. I got, you know, a little bit... Yeah, I got most all the tools out of here that we were using and that it's a lot less clustered so I'm going to be able to, I just want to be able to come down here and work. I, I really don't like, I did the one, you know, video on how crappy my shop is. That's, you know, we're kind of crappy in the pattern shop again here. So anyhow, get that place cleaned up. This place is for the most part cleaned up. I got to get a few more things out here. When I leave here today, I'm taking them with me. Um, for the most part, this did really good in that. And, uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. <clears throat> One of the things I'm thinking, I got to work with the sand a little bit, you know, other than that. Um, the other thing, when I was taking the copes off, um, I'm working on these pins, these flash pins aren't, I don't think, long enough. So I'm working on uh, a couple, it's got some 5 8 socks. I got to turn them down half inch and that. So I got to go to a buddy's and borrow his lathe. I don't have a lathe. So hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be able to get that done uh, going on that. Um, the true Y, this is that offset Y pattern I'm working on, and I did the same thing. Um, offset Y, if you can see, I had the wrong pin center on here, and I don't know how I did that. I did that as well with the true Y pipe. I brought that down here to sample that today because he's getting a little anxious with that. I did the same thing, so I gotta go fix that. I'll take that back home, fix it. Um, so hopefully Sunday, what I'm planning on doing, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, I gotta get going on those aluminum hand wheels. So I wanna do a batch of those first because it's kinda like a bigger mold. And um, when we pour the aluminum up, it'll heat the sand up a little bit. I think that's one of the issues. It's starting to get cold again here. Like I said, it's supposed to be nice over the weekend, but however, at night it's getting down to 30 degrees so it's still cold in here it cools the sand off so i think that's one of the issues we're having is some sand issues uh real quick i wanted to show you what blaine did like i said blaine always goes above and beyond um i had found these valves there these valves were like um i think the buy them new the old ones one was gone and the other one was crushed so i actually my dad had acquired a bunch of you know pipe fittings this all, all kinds of stuff you know and these were in a box they're brand new but they were backwards from what they're supposed to do blaine rebuild them got them going one's leaking but what he did was he made these paddles on here and these are for you know i can use my knee to uh use these paddles like i said this one's the jolt the up and down and this one is for a vibrator that's the other thing i ordered one of those i gotta go pick it up tomorrow so that'll be here Sunday too. So we'll have a vibrator on these things. So that goes to this hose here. And I just gotta press that and the vibrator will go. 
is I'm pulling the pattern off. Okay, so that would be a cool thing. Um, another thing I, I did too, and here's the, I keep on promising you guys, I always forget to uh, uh, put links on, or, or I, for, I don't forget to, Joe does it, I forget to tell Joe to put links on. So um, I talked to my foundry guy last week, the foundry supply guy, okay, and, and we'll try to get a link to where he is. They haven't got it down to, they were going to try to do something where um, they were going to try to sell in smaller quantities and that, but he, they can't figure out how to do it. He actually approached me, you know, to see if I would, you know, get into that business, which would be a good business if somebody might think about doing it. I just don't have the time, I don't have the space, because you're going to have to buy some stuff in bulk. And I'm not very good at paperwork. It's probably mostly going to be paperwork. And you're going to have to, you know, label stuff, ship stuff. I, I suck at that kind of stuff. So um, it, it's not really a business I want to get into. However, they will sell stuff to you. Um, the, the company's called Hill and Griffith, okay? And they do foundry supplies. They do sands. They do... The binders for the sands, you know, you guys aren't going to be able to buy the sand because it's a thousand pounds. I mean, that, that's the least uh, in sand that they'll do. However, for the home foundry guys, what I'm using in here right now is the Petrobon system, okay? And that's the best system for guys just starting out, just getting used to it. You, you know, I've been doing this for a little bit. And I'm still using it for several reasons. I'm doing smaller parts. Um, it, it's better for finer, small parts and that. But it's way less forgiving Petrobon versus using bentonite clay. Um, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one thing with the bentonite is um, it doesn't smoke because you use water with it instead of the oil with the Petro Petrobon. Okay. So eventually I got to get to that, especially if I'm doing those hand wheels, that's, I'm going to have to get to that system if I'm starting to do more stuff like that. Um, they're bigger castings, so, you, you know, they're a little more forgiving with the aluminum and that. So I'm, I'm sticking with the Petrobon, but I'm, I'm digressing here. Um, so Hill and Griffin, what they'll do is, I've seen guys that sell Petrobon already mixed. You get a 50-pound bag of sand and petrobon and it's, it's like 200 250 bucks i think for a 50 pound bag okay he sells me i get a 50 pound bag of petrobon the binding clay all right i get that for it's around 250 dollars and then he sells me the um oil that comes in a five gallon jug and I, I, I can't remember, they sell that by the pound. They might sell that smaller too, but I got the five gallon bucket. I think it cost me, I think under $500 for both of them. And literally I'll make pretty close to two tons of sand out of it, you know, which the home guys, you're not gonna be doing that too much. I mean, you might over the years though too, and this stuff will last forever. You know, as long as you keep it, you know, in the dry, just get one of those totes. You know, that's what I got mine in down here. I've got moisture problems. I don't have an issue with that. So I just put the, the bag, I just open the bag up, take it out of the bag, and just dump it in a tote. I haven't had issues. I mean, it's been sitting here for the longest time. And then the five-gallon bucket, I just dump it into an eight-gallon jug so it's a little easier to use. But, I mean, at that, you're going to spend $500, and you, you'll be able to make tons and tons and tons of sand, you know, versus buying you know, 50 pounds of Petrobon for 250 bucks. And 50 pounds of Petrobon is not going to get you that far. I mean, you will not, you're not going to make a mold that big with this, you know. So, it's, you're going to have to spend $500 for Petrobon sand to make that much. And the problem with that, too, is this degrades over time, too. So, every, like series of three molds I'll make, I'll make series of three molds, 
when I start mulling the Petra bond again, I add a little bit of clay and a little bit of oil to it too. So I mean, that, that's an issue too. So if you already buy the pre-mixed stuff, or the stuff that's already mixed, you know, it's gonna degrade and, and you're gonna have crap sand, you know. So that's not too bad. And then like I said, I think I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he said he'll do like the, um, oh come on, the uh, core, uh, the core oil, it's not oil, um, you used to make stuff in oil, uh, I'll think of it in a minute, but the, the core binder, I think he'll sell that in a gallon thing, if not, you gotta buy a five gallon jug, it's still, I think it's under 100 bucks, I, I really do, if I'm not mistaken, you know, so that'll last the home guy for a while, you know, get a jug of CO2 to, um, uh, you know, harden it and that, and you'll, you'll do good. But it, the place is called um, Hill and Griffith. Like I said, if I remember, I'll uh, try to have Joe put a link on it. If not, we'll, we'll get it. Um, you know, too, if you guys know a couple other guys, maybe you can, you know, go hazzy hazzy on some of this stuff or, or whatever. And, um, you know, it, it's way, I tell you, it's, I really wish I could take him up on his offer and start kind of a business buying from him and selling in smaller quantities just to help guys out get going with this stuff because I, I want to still uh, <laughs> get this going and uh, sodium silicate is what I was thinking for the core binder okay so sodium silicate you know I, I'm pretty sure I, I know you can get it in five gallon pails and it, it's not that that much you know so literally it, it's just you know when I look at the guys that's you know and I don't want to poo poo those guys either but I mean for what they're selling stuff for it's just it's cost prohibitive for a lot of guys so you know Hill and Griffith guys will take care of you um, like I said I'll, I'll look for a link for those guys so keep that in mind and then um, you know as I go along I'll, I'll try to get you some more um, info uh, there's a guy down here in Cleveland or I should say up here in Cleveland he does the crucibles and that in there for the most part you know I don't know like shipping and that but it, it's they're way cheaper than what you know I can get them online too so and it's, it's cool because I can just go to his place it, it, it literally probably take me about 10 minutes from the foundry to go go pick up stuff and they, they got the refractory cement the uh, um, what you call it too? I'll try to get a uh, link to those guys on there. It's called Knock Refractory. So they do the brick, the fire brick, and they do the um, cement and all that stuff. So anyhow, I'm gonna cut you guys loose today. I'll try to get this up to Joe, get something on, and I definitely will. We'll pour some casting Sunday. I, I gotta do it. If, if I can't get this thing working the way it needs to be done, we'll we'll do some stuff up by hand. But it is this uh, this tamper is working awesome. It, it, you know that's really good I think there's just a couple like I gotta get pressure going I think really the sand is doing oh that's uh, Helen Griffith I was saying too uh, I try I'm trying a new parting compound out for them too so a parting compound he'll sell it smaller I know that so I just bought a five gallon pail of it it was delivered to my house I think it was 120 bucks five gallon gallon pail then it's a little bit more expensive of, of one they actually put graphite in this one so it's a little bit more slick. So we're trying that one out. And then, so, I mean, five gallon pail for a home guy, I mean, that's, that'll last, I mean, that's gonna last me a long time too. So, I mean, the last time I had a box about that big, and I still, I've had it for two years, I still got half of a box still, so. So yeah, I'm gonna cut you guys loose today. Um, you know, if you guys can subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it. Tell your buddies about me. I'd really appreciate that. Let's get them into the trades here and uh, get going on some things. And um, push the like button if you can. And if I remember, like I said, I'll try to remember to have Joe put some links on here. So everybody have a good one out there. And most important, everybody stay safe.